welcome to the dentist tab. Today's video is about the anatomic considerations of form and function in dental anatomy. We will be discussing about the curve of Spee, curve of Wilson, compensating occlusal curvature or the sphere of monsoon, contact area, interproximal space and embrasure. The three major functions of human teeth to which their general form, contours and alignment are directly related are mastication or chewing, aesthetics and appearance, phonetics and speech. To best accomplish these three functions, the teeth display certain forms which align and stabilize the entire dentition and protect the teeth. Even one aberrant tooth contour may lead to the breakdown of entire dental mechanism. Let us learn in detail about some of these anatomic considerations. Beginning with the curve of speed. It is the curvature that begins at the tip of canines and follows the buccal cusp tips of the premolars and molars posteriorly when viewed from the facial aspect. It is two-dimensional and curves upward from anterior to posterior. The individual posterior teeth are inclined from the vertical long axis of the body to conform to this curve. Maxillary molar roots are inclined mesially and mandibular molar roots are inclined distally. The curve of Wilson it is the medial lateral curvature of the occlusal plane of posterior teeth. It is also two-dimensional and is at right angles to that of the curve of Spee. It helps to complement the paths of the condyles during the movements of mandible. The crowns of mandibular posterior teeth are inclined lingually and the crowns of maxillary posterior teeth are inclined buccally. It becomes deeper posteriorly so that the molar's inclination is greater than that of the premolars. Because of this curve, the buccal cusps of mandibular molars and the lingual cusps of the maxillary molars usually appear to be longer. The Compensating Occlusal Curvature or the Spear of Monsoon it is the three-dimensional curvature of the occlusal plane which is the combination of the curve of Spee and the curve of Wilson. It is in the form of a portion of a ball or a spear and therefore this curvature is concave for the mandibular arch and convex for the maxillary arch. The contact area. In a complete arch, each tooth touches adjacent teeth. These places where the teeth do touch are called the contact areas. These areas aid in stabilizing the dental arch and prevent food material from slipping between the teeth. Contact areas become more cervically located from anterior to posterior in each quadrant. On an individual tooth, the distal contact area normally has more cervical location than the mesial contact area. The interproximal space. It is the triangular shaped area between adjacent teeth in the same arch. The triangle is formed by alveolar bone at its cervical base, proximal surfaces of adjacent teeth on its sides, and the contact area of adjacent teeth at its apex. So these structures are thus the boundaries of the interproximal space. It is cervical to the contact area and is best observed from the facial aspect. The size and shape of the interproximal space depend on the form and location of all its boundaries. It aids in the self-cleaning process of the dentition. The embrasure. It is the open space between the proximal surfaces of two adjacent teeth in the same arch. Proper embrasure form has two main physiological purposes. To serve as a spillway for the foot material during mastication and 
to serve as an integral part of the self cleaning process of teeth thank you for watching do like the video if you found it informative share it with your friends and subscribe to the dentist hub for more updates